Wine grapes are being grown for the first time on Santa Catalina Island. The island vineyard was an idea that began 25 years ago. As we were riding along, he was kind of looking at the hills going, wow, this would be a great place for a vineyard. And I looked around and I thought, yeah, you're right. And so we just started talking about it way back then, and that was long before we knew we were going to spend the rest of our lives with each other. Allison Wrigley Rusak and husband Jeff Rusak put that plan on the back burner. In the following years, they bought a winery in the Santa Ynez Valley. The way our lives went, it was, it was a tremendous experience for us to be able to establish our own winery and work it with just the two of us and learn everything from the ground up and uh, do it all ourselves. They revisited the idea of starting a vineyard on Catalina, but this time they had more than 10 years of winemaking experience behind them. There are so many unknowns about Catalina Island and, and its soils. Not that Catalina Island hasn't been studied somewhat extensively, but it hasn't really been studied for, for vineyards. Can great grapes be grown on Santa Catalina Island? And the answer so far is yes. On March 16, 2007, the first vines were planted. They were tiny. They were like this big. We each had our own little vine. And, uh, and we didn't know if they were actually going to grow. They could have all died. And then we went through our plague of crickets <laughs> and other things that we never dreamed would be an issue. And uh, so the fact that it survived all of it and we got not only grapes, but we got good tasting uh, juice and then it became wine. It's just, it's amazing. It's a real labor of love and very, very exciting. Despite the crickets, the first harvest of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Zinfandel was robust. The second harvest was a different story. Amazingly, this year we were hit and hit hard with yellow jackets. Um, they came in in droves. They came in right at the wrong time for us when the grapes were 22, 23 bricks, and, uh, and they didn't quit. We even went so far as to use shop vacs, or those big industrial vacuum cleaners, to see if we could vacuum off some of these yellow jackets. Um, Unfortunately, for the thousands that we were able to get, tens of thousands still came in, and we lost a, a, a large percentage of our crop to yellow jackets. We lost, especially in the, in the Santa Cruz Island Zinfandel, approximately 50% to maybe 60% of our fruit. I think the part that people forget about this business, because there tends to be a romantic side to it, is that it's really farming. And we're watching weather. I mean, when you're processing and you have to stay ahead of what there is coming, and when your grapes are getting close to where you think you're ready to pick and you see a heat wave on the horizon, um, you need to be prepared to pick those grapes within 24 hours so that you don't have a dramatic runaway and a spike in the sugar levels or um, your acids and pHs go you know, directions you don't want to see them. The grapes, harvested from five acres of disturbed agricultural land, are flown from the island to the mainland for processing. Future plans include building a winery and a tasting room on the island. From a winemaking side, you know, this is an incredible challenge. I have a tremendous amount of peers now over all these years, many of them still up in the north coast. And the first thing they all say is, cool, <laughs> you know, what a cool project to be able to be part of. For Allison Wrigley Rusak, it's about carrying on the Wrigley family legacy of promoting the island to visitors from the mainland 22 miles away. If it fails miserably, then you're responsible. If it succeeds brilliantly, then you're responsible. So. The final prices of the first bottles are yet to be determined. We ascertained early on that this was not going to be a wine that you would figure out what it cost you to make and then you sell it for that plus a little or just even at cost. We're, we're not going to come anywhere close to break even on this. But that's really not so much what it's about. It's about drawing people to Catalina, providing another interesting thing for them to see when they're here, 
it's another way to share Catalina with both the residents and the people who may not know so much about it.